Right, so I'm joined at the Tour of Britain. I'm here around the back of the Civic Centre. You've already seen the interview with Matt Barbet. Um, now I'm here with a legend. That is Pippa York. Hello, Pippa. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Jolly good. So how are you finding the tour? So obviously, the tour started on Sunday. We're now five days in. How are you finding travelling the country? It's not as tiring as pedalling the country. Um, <laughs> It's it's slightly different level of fatigue. It's more a mental peak than, than a mm. physical fatigue, but it's okay. You get used to it. I don't know. So the past five stages include the past four stages. There's been some really good cycling. If you want to watch highlights, there'll be a link to the ITV hub down below. But what's been your highlight of the tour so far? Would you say from the four stages that have completed? I'd say probably yesterday when it was a really dynamic day of racing. Um, everybody expected it to be pretty full on racing from the start and it was so there was always a whole heap of little stories going on tactically um, so it, that was a really interesting day. Well the tactics play a lot more into it than I suppose people would realise in like road racing people think oh it's just racing from point A to point B but with the tour you have king of the mountain you have also you have sprint stages and you have everything in between so really it's anyone's game pretty much you know, throughout the day anything can happen can't it? Usually anything does happen, you know, quite quite often um, it's about when, when you're trying to win these countries, it's about your adaptability to the circumstances. Mm. Um, usually the the course isn't the limiting factor, it's the speed that you race it at. So, um, yeah, anything usually happens and does. Well, yeah, because I know a couple of days ago, sadly, a cyclist had to retire because they went, was it into the back of a motorbike or something? There was an incident. Yeah, uh, I think it was Harry Tanfield one of the best um, domestic uh, UK domestic riders. Um, yeah, and in the atrocious weather, I think, what was it, the day to second or third day? It was re really rain, I can't remember, it was, it was well, horrendous. No, was, the coverage on ITV was delayed. Was Sunderland where we crashed on the, on the, the yeah. Sunderland, yeah. It was re there was a downpour and yeah, quite often when it's like that, you can't see where you're going, which, yeah. sounds, which sounds really dangerous, but it, that's what happens, um, yeah. And the, crashed into a motorbike but if people so for people who don't know who Pippa is then would you like to explain a bit to the people and can I just point off camera we have got an audience of kids who are watching who's really excited so they're watching me with great intent these group of kids so I need to be careful that I don't swear don't copy anything I say if I do um, so for people who don't know who you are don't you give a bit of background as to who you are so I used to be a professional cyclist before I transitioned. So I transitioned from male to female. I was the first UK uh, person to win a classification at the Tour de France. I was probably one of the first to challenge for the overall victory at Tour de France. Um, I was a professional in Europe for 16 seasons, which is quite long. And yeah, so I lived in France m almost all of that time, a few other countries in Canada you know, while I was in Europe. But yeah. I had quite a long career outside of the UK, whereas now you can actually live in the UK and almost commute to races. Yeah. And given, I'm just speaking about you, you transition from male to female, do you think more could be done for people for transitioning sports personalities, would you say? I, I'm, I'm trying to speak the right words and not to offend. It's okay, you won't offend me. Um, it's so rare, you know, it's a case by case basis. And yeah, it's a, the, the the level of kind of healthcare that you get um, doesn't really isn't really affected if you're a, a sports person or you're a well-known person. It's it's the same kind of standard care up to a point, and then depending on what your issues are um, with your transition, then you know then it's changed slightly for that. But it's you know it's difficult to give advice to people. You know what what needs to be changed, whatever. I'm not medically professional, no, so no. so I'm, I'm I've been through the system, but I, I'm. Um, I'm a patient. I was a patient. I wasn't. I wasn't directing what happened. So, if anyone wants to get into cycling road, which is what the Torbid Torbid is road cycling, yeah. which is different to stuff in the velodrome and stuff, because that's not road cycling. That's a completely different yeah, sporting. Yeah. Any advice for people who want to get into road? Any youngsters out there? Um, yeah, we see quite often a lot of. So, so you see a lot of British cycling, and it's track based because that you know that's how the funding model works for. Um, sport in, in in britain um and, and road kind of exists alongside that but actually when you go to europe europe um europe treats road cycling better than the track cycling so it's a bigger thing okay. um so so quite often 
your only access that you see that is that as an example of racing is, is when you watch it on TV, so when the Tour of France or Tour of Spain or Tour of Italy comes along, well, or, 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 really or, or, the, or the Tour of Britain, so you, you yeah. get that. And um, yeah, it's just all about enjoying, enjoying yourself when you're young and, and riding to different places and, and having different experiences. I'm going to put you on the spot now. For the, so this, is, this will be going up at once the Tour's completely finished. Who do you think, what team or what rider will win the entire tour? Come on, let's get your predictions in. Who do you think will win the tour as a team and as a rider? I think Magnus Sheffield from um, Ineos or Ride will win. Just because they have the options to you know, play t- a tactical game because Tom Pidcock, who's the favourite for Ineos, uh, and, and everybody expects to win. I think he'll be kind of marked out of the, the, the race uh, and Magnus Sheffield has been riding really strongly these last couple of months. What team? Ineos. Ineos, Ineos yeah. for the team yeah. and Ineos for the rider? Yes. Brilliant. Well, um, are you on social media? Uh, are only you? on Twitter, at Pippa York. At, there you go, guys, at Pippa York. If you want to follow her on Twitter, at Pippa York. Thank you so much for joining me. I know now we just wait. They've set their rider at this point. The riders have already set off. I don't know where they are, but they're, s- they're coming. And the finish usually. <laughs> Somewhere between the start and the finish. You're almost as sarcastic as Matt Barbet is. No. <laughs> You've worked with him too long already. It's only been a few days. Is, we've, we've, we barely know where we are after a few days, so every day kind of becomes the same. So, so, it's, so for you, so when, so so we're in Mansfield today. Um, because we don't always go to the start, we can't, uh, we can't always remember where it is. No. <laughs> so we stay between the start and the finish and then we don't look silly. Uh, that's, that, I like, I like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick to that. But as we're talking now, obviously we've got the team coaches arriving actually, haven't we? Yeah. So we've just had Bora turn up and we've got, who's this now? Fordiani here. So these are all coming from the finish line, start so they've line. They've all come from the start and there's a, there's a route that they follow to get here without getting stuck in traffic and, and the DVA and all those kind of roadblocks and things that you get in every, in every town. So all the team buses have a, have a certain route, a certain way to go rather than normal members of the Joe public yeah. to a degree. Otherwise, because every time we come to, there's chaos with traffic because of road closures. So there's a set route for them to arrive here where they won't get stuck under bridges and in, in massive traffic jams. Oh, we've got another minibus, uh, oh, it's a motorhome actually, isn't it, coming. So, a lot of the teams have big buses, but I'm assuming some of them also have, like, little motorhomes. Well, there's quite a few now coming, isn't there? We just it, depends on the bu- it really does depend on their budget. Okay. So, so, it's like football teams, you know. Yeah. Premier League, First Division, so the same thing exists in cycling. I am kind of wishing now that I had two microphones, because I do have the capability of having two microphones, so one boom mic probably would have been better. So we've just had Trinity Racing turn up, and we've got the Movistar. I always call him Movie Star, but it's Movie Star. Movie Star. I always get their name, I always call their name wrong. So they're all turning up. So they'll be gradually coming along at, from West Bridgeford. So we're going to take a look around those in a bit. But anyway, I'll let you get on, because you've got work to do. Yes. And I've got work to do as well, funny enough. Good luck with that. Thank you very much. No, thank you very much. You're welcome. Don't forget, guys, it's at Pippa York on Twitter. And, and, and just let Pippa know how lovely she was on camera. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much, Pippa. Thank you. Thank you.